His glory to see and rain down from heaven fresh living waters bring us your liberty can we sing that one more time and come home Be sing that one more time and come, Holy Spirit, move in your people, draw us to Jesus, His glory to see. upon me, breath of God, breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord, as I lift my hands in surrender to
Spirit. We are walking in your love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, Jesus, we adore. Amen. Jesus, I adore. We worship you, mighty God. And Jesus, I adore. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, I adore your home. Can we sing that one more time, church? Let's lift it.
one more time with the hands lifted up. We are standing. Sing it. Lift your voice and sing it to him. On holy ground. Hallelujah. And I. Sing hallelujah! 
Jesus, you are holy. You are holy, Lord. And we worship you this morning. You are holy, Lord. We worship you this morning. We honor you this morning. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. As we lift you up and magnify your name. Lord, you're holy. Lord, Deliverer, 
shield and defend my strong tower, my best friend. Won't be content, won't be present, soon and coming came. The Alpha, Omega, Lord of everything. Holy, holy, holy is your name. We cry, holy, holy. This is a realm of your glory. This is a realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power as it's moving in this place. This is a realm of your glory. This is a realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power. And it's moving in this place. Oh, can we sing that again? The realm of your glory is a realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power. It is moving in this place. We are in the prayer. God's glory on their way, like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels say. Church. This is a realm of your glory. This is a realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power. I can move in this place. You're in the presence of the angels with God's glory on their way. Like the voice of man. Oh, 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 The elders 
when angels cry, the redeemed, we worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Can we sing holy, holy? Can we lift him up? Holy. This morning, that is not like you. Well, those an angels now. The redeemed, we worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Can we lift him up? There is none like Yeshua. Hallelujah. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Oh, the elders and angels. The elders and angels bow. The redeemed, we worship you now. Oh. Both our hands lifted up. Can we sing it one more time? To the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy are. Oh my God, oh my God. You are worthy to be praised. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. precious blood thank you for your precious blood holy holy yeah hallelujah jesus it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows precious blood yeah it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose it power sing it church it reaches it reaches to the valley yeah. and it flows to the lowest oh it's that precious blood thank you Jesus it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power The blood that Jesus shed 
second Sunday of this fourth month the Lord has been touching many people from early morning today and I believe that you also are going to be touched by the power of the living God God is going to do something great and marvelous in our midst today because he is of a faithful God today we are going to partake in the Holy Communion but before we do that I'm going to ask Pastor Joy, my sister from Coimbatore, her daughter is here. I want her to pray for the communion right now. That the Lord, yeah, you can come up. You can get anything. Hallelujah. We're just going to come up. We're going to pray right now. Everybody lifting your hands uh, to the Lord God right now. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Uh, oh, the blood of Jesus. Uh, oh, the blood of Jesus. Those who are serving the communion. I want you to come and stand around the table as we are going to worship and thank the Lord. Prepare yourself for this communion. I want all of you to know that communion is not a ritual of the church. Many people just don't even say the name of Jesus or pray and expect something before they partake in the communion they just take it and eat the bread and swallow the grape juice but I want you to expect a miracle in the coming week on behalf of your life your family your children and the future of your children and your life maybe a sickness that you are struggling with for several years God can give you the miracle as soon as you partake in the Holy Communion this is the blood of Jesus 
and it is the broken body of Jesus Christ even as you are preparing yourselves a man came to our church he had a sickness called Crohn's his own intestine eats his own intestine one in one million are affected by this sickness there's absolutely no cure he's a very rich man working for a very big company went to one of the topmost doctors who treats such sickness in India that doctor is called as the one of the topmost doctors he told him you have to live with this and die but turn to your neighbor and say we have the blood of Jesus say it with that conviction we have the blood of Jesus whatever is your sickness the moment you partake in the Holy Communion today can be the day of your miracle your destiny will change your future will change your life will change as Sammy was preaching in the power of the Holy Communion this man and his wife came and every week they used to partake in the communion and say by your stripes we are healed <laughs> by your stripes we are healed and this is your blood after several weeks one day he felt so good in his body he didn't feel weak he felt more energy inside of him he went to the same doctor and the doctor checked him and said I don't know what has happened to you but you have no more Crohn's that's the power in the blood of Jesus can we give him the best clap offering that's the power in the blood of Jesus my dear friends today even as you prepare yourself to partake in this holy communion may this day be the last day of your sickness in your body may this day be the last day of your struggles and your pain May this day be the last day of all your fears about your future. May this day be the last day when you will be sitting and worrying about what's going to happen. You're going to say, it's the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for even as we partake in this Holy Communion, we pray, may the power of the blood yes. remove every stagnation that has held back Gosh. in the name of Jesus, that has held back lives, that has held back dreams, that yes. has held back the power of God to move in our lives. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Jesus. things that have been held back for years, may there yes. be an opening right now, Holy Spirit. God, I release for open doors. We pray for sicknesses in the blood. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Let depression break off in the name of Jesus. Jesus. God, we pray right now, Holy Spirit, that dreams that have been Jesus. put on hold may come to life in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I speak life into marriages. Marriages that are holding back. I pray, Holy Spirit, may the power of God, may the power of love be poured into marriages right now, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the healing anointing that is moving in this place. 
We thank you for open doors. We thank you for dreams that are being fulfilled in this place, oh God. We thank you that stagnation won't be a point in our life anymore. That we will break forth life from right now. That living waters will flow from us, Holy Spirit. And even as we partake, everything, not just us, but our family line will be changed in the name of Jesus. That we will live for the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Let there be a legacy be left because of the blood of Jesus in our lives. Shake we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the power of God that is moving and setting us free right now. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Sing it out loudly, quiet. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Precious blood, yeah, oh, the blood of Jesus. the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the way. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross. 
As we are going to partake in the Holy Communion, I want each and every one of you to carefully listen to what I'm going to say right now. All of us, we know that India is getting ready for a very big election. At this time, we as Christians, we all must be ready to go and cast our votes. I don't want any of you as Christians to stay on that day at home and pray for the election. Your prayers are needed before that day but on that day you must go and vote the higher percentage of Christians do not vote in India and are around the world because they say we believe in prayer and they stay at home and they pray but they don't go to vote if your son is having his exam tomorrow, chemistry, in early morning he looks at you and he says, Mommy, I want to fast and pray today. I don't want to go for my exam, but I want to pray that God will give me 100 marks. I know what you will do to him. It's the same way we are at the crucial moment for our nation. Churches are broken, pastors are beaten. Groups of ruthless people walk into church during the time of worship. They break the keyboard, the drum set. They burn the Bibles. So many things happen. Poor pastors, they have struggled and bought those things. Where they will go? As Christians, we must rise up during this election and we must vote. Will all of you say an amen to it? A louder amen. Tell all your friends, don't stay at home and pray on that day, but go and vote. I don't want to tell you for whom to vote. It's your choice as a citizen of this country. But I want you to go on that day and would tell all your Christian friends please don't stay at home and pray but go and vote today I have sent a clip all over North India Northeast India and South India and this morning in North India in most of the churches they are playing my clip in Hindi but I want to play that for you in English and this communion we are going to dedicate it for God to touch India. India must be touched. I'm going this afternoon at 4 o'clock to dedicate almost two, I did yesterday, six more churches to Bellary and 
Rachel and be there right now the hottest place but we want to be a planted churches in those places today at four o'clock I leave from here every place we want to plant church we are training 1400 in Delhi and after the graduation in the month of March a month of May we are going to plant 1400 churches in northern India we are working hard to establish churches God did not make me a chairman for this nation to hold on to the position and die but God brought me into this to revolutionize our nation so that everywhere we will build churches for the glory of Jesus Christ and I want you to stand with us at this time and every one of you we are going to pray very sincerely that God's will will be done go ahead and play that clip and after that dear pastors Christian leaders brothers and sisters in Christ as we stand on the threshold of another crucial election I am compelled to address each one of you with a heartfelt plea to exercise your right to vote do not be a silent observer but actively participate I urge you my dear pastors Christian leaders brothers and sisters seek wisdom and discernment from God even as you spend time in prayer for this election let us remember that our vote is not just a civic duty but a sacred trust it is a way for us to honor God and seek his kingdom here on earth we need to rise up as a united body of Christ and cast our votes so I implore you my beloved pastors, Christian leaders, brothers and sisters, let us pray fervently for God's perfect will to be done. Together, let us be instruments of His peace, justice and His grace. May God bless you all and may He guide our steps as we fulfill our sacred duty to vote. May God bless you and may India be blessed. Wonderful Jesus. After you partake in the communion, I'm going to ask Colonel Gopadi to pray for India. India is in our hearts. And India must be blessed. When the churches grow, India will grow. When the churches are blessed, India will be blessed. Because God is the one who builds the nations. And let's all partake. Hallelujah. Lifting your hands to Jesus. Praying for our nation. India must be touched by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every nook and corner, people must know that Jesus is Lord. And if you believe, I want you to put your hands together and pray right now. Clap your hands and pray right now. India must be touched and must be washed by the blood of the Lamb of God. Colonel, pray, keep praying. Oh, Rabba Shata Rama Kabada Kamada Rabba. Oh, Rabba Balama Shabada Lama Dura Dalaba. Oh, Rabba Balama Shabada Lama Dura Dalaba. Hallelujah. 
thank you for who you are and yes. what you have done in our lives oh father god our yes. father jesus you were wounded for our transgressions you are bruised for our iniquities chastisement for our peace was upon you and yes. by your stripes we are healed our father healed. thank you for the blood shed for the whole country lord god our father this blood will not go wasted oh lord god our father we call upon you lord that Oh Lord God, all Christians will go, oh Lord God, and Lord, Lord, give them the spirit of discernment, spirit of discernment for whom to walk, oh Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this blood shed for each one of us, Lord. By his strength, we are healed, my Savior. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. We give you glory, honor, power, and praise. We want India to be washed in blood of Jesus, yes, Lord God. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. You love India, Father you God. It's God. a time for India to be washed you in blood of Jesus. God. Our Father, thank you, you Father. Thank you, Jesus. Your will you be done. God. Your perfect will be done Exercise on this earth, in, in our country, O Lord God. We ask this in Jesus', Jesus precious name. name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Lawrence and the musicians. Ushers, get ready. If anybody here, you have come for the first time to our church, we want you to lift up your right hand and show it to us so that ushers will give you a card. Anybody here for the first time, please lift up your right hand and we want to welcome you in Jesus' name. Anyone in this place for the first time, lift up your right hand and we would love to welcome you. Yes, there's one person there. You can give him a card and bring him at the end of the service. At the, there's one more person here. Praise God. God bless you. Two people there. And let's put our hands and welcome them in Jesus' mighty name. At the end of the service, I will be calling you to come forward to pray because of the message I'm going to preach right now. And uh, by the time ushers, I want you to get the newcomers and don't mix them up with the other group and bring them there, Pastor Francis and my pastors, Esudas and others will meet with them. At this time, even as you watch the announcements, uh, we are going to take our tithes and offerings. Yesterday, our senior pastor, Reverend Paul Tengaya, dedicated two churches in Karnataka, Ashirwada AG Church at Hassan. And Shalom AG Church at Nella Mangala. Glory to God. This afternoon, Pastor Paul and the team will be leaving to dedicate six more churches in Karnataka at Bellari, Raichur. Two churches at Bidar, Dharwad, and North Canara District. Please do keep them in your prayers. We have our child dedication service next Sunday, April 21st, at 6 p.m. at the FGAG Prayer and Retreat Center. If you would like to dedicate your child and for more information, please contact the FGAG Care Center. For all the youth at FGAG, we have our Youth Bible Study every Wednesday at 6.45 p.m. at FGAG Intranagar. Do join in. It's a great time of learning the word and fellowship. We have Christian education classes at all three locations after the services. FGAG Indranagar, FGAG Kanuru, the FGAG Prayer and Retreat Center. We have amazing topics that will strengthen you and greatly benefit your spiritual growth. Basics of the Bible, the life of Christ, the Bible and legal matters. For biblical financial management, counseling, evangelism, the book of Acts. We are also happy to inform you about the commencement of Christian education classes in your zones as well. Please do register for these classes and your zonal pastor will reach out to you. For more information, please contact the FJG Care Center. Subscribe to the FJG Church WhatsApp channel for daily decrees and declarations, announcements of new songs, updates on events and much more. To subscribe right now, we encourage you to take out your mobile phone and scan the QR code displayed on the screen. This is an update regarding the power conference at Dehradun, Uttarakhand. 
Due to circumstances arising from the upcoming elections, the power conference at Dehradun has been cancelled. However, we are pleased to inform you that we will be proceeding with the other conferences planned across North India. Please do keep them in your prayers. VBS Scuba Diving into Friendship with God, May 1st, 2nd and 3rd. FJG Indranagar, Kanuru and all our SOS Church locations. Don't miss it! and FGAG Kanuru 12 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Friday at FGAG Indranagar 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. FGAG Kanuru 2 p.m. to 12 midnight FGAG Indranagar We will be praying for the nation of India Revival, elections, the assemblies of God across India Church growth, miracles, signs and wonders The anointing of the Holy Spirit The upcoming power conferences The various ministries at FGAG Church and much more. For more information, please call the FGAG Care Center on 97424-111. Such a powerful presence of God filled everyone present at the Friday Breakthrough Prayer at FGAG Kanuru. At FGAG Indranagar for 90 minutes with Jesus, every soul was touched and blessed as they experienced a mighty anointing and powerful miracles. This sister was suffering with cancer, but after prayer, when she went to the hospital, she was told that she is 100% cancer-free. Not only that, her fingers got affected as well, and she was told that her fingers needed to be amputated last week. But she came for prayer and received complete healing. Hallelujah! Nothing is too hard for our God. This sister was suffering with thyroid for the last two years. She began attending Friday prayer every week and looking to God for a miracle. She did a retest and when she received the report, it said everything is absolutely normal. Our God is an awesome God. Her sister, her name is Philomena. She's staying in Chennai. For the last 24 years, she was suffering with a kind of a fungus infection on both the legs. 24 years of medication, nothing helped. Finally, doctor said, the situation has become worse. We need to ampute both the legs. From here, they took the anointed oil yes. and carried it to Chennai and put it on her head and prayed. Recently, they did the test again. Absolutely, there is no fungus in it. And the medical report showed no fungal growth anymore. Thank you, Jesus. By your stripes, every sickness and disease is healed. This brother's younger son fell very sick and was taken to the hospital. He was told by the doctors that the son's hemoglobin level was extremely low and that he would need a blood transfusion. They ran to the house of God and prayed to the miracle worker. Today, the report says everything is normal and no blood transfusion is required. What a good and faithful God we have, the healer and restorer, Jesus Christ. This sister's husband had a kidney disease. His stomach had bloated as well. They came last Friday for prayer. Today, the doctors have said there is no need for dialysis. He has been completely healed by the power of Jesus Christ. 
This sister had intense swelling in her legs and was in terrible fear of what may happen next. But she came for prayer, crying out to the Lord to heal her. And now the swelling has completely vanished. Glory to God for His miracle working power. Join us for Friday Breakthrough Prayer, 10 a.m. FGG Kanuru and 90 Minutes with Jesus, 6 p.m. FGG Indranagar. Come and receive your miracle. Ashes, thank you. Please be seated. I want you to turn your Bibles to Joel chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. As I've been telling you, as I'm meditating on the Bible, another two more weeks' time, I will finish uh, reading the Bible for the second time in the year 2024. I, anybody finish reading one time? You read one? Oh, wow. Anybody else? One time? You finish reading this year? One brother, and here we have. Anybody else? Okay, half. You have finished half of the Bible? Good. Yes, exactly. Anyone else? Superb. Praise God. Start reading the Bible. Bible will set us free. We like uh, all the blessings, but we need the word. So I've been studying the word. This is my 47th year in the ministry. I determined that this year, I will start all over again, like I just graduated from the Bible college. So this year, I've increased my prayer time my fasting time, and my study time of the Bible. Throughout, I'll keep listening, listening. That day while I was going to KG, if I was listening to the Bible, Prakash was with me, and the, the moment, the next day, I spoke that entire portion. Prakash came and asked me, how do you remember all that you heard that day? I said, I want to, I'm hungry. I want to read the word. So read the Bible, because Bible will give you strength. Cut down on your mobile phones, Cut down on your talking to people too much and start meditating on the Bible because Bible will give you strength. So during these days of my reading the Bible, I've been looking at different parts in the Bible to preach on a Sunday. So as you know that I finished uh, the book of Ruth, I finished uh, Jonah, I finished Esther, Esra, and then what did I finish? Abakuk, uh, I finished last week. And now I want to do one the book of Joel. Now as you are turning to the book of Joel, I want you to know that Joel was a prophet to the people of Judah. Why did God use Joel to prophesy to the people of Judah? It is uh, widely accepted that during the time of Hosea and Amos, uh, as all of you know that during every king, uh, there were prophets who went and prophesied to them and told them about the judgment of God. And some of the prophets went and told them about what God was going to do. And as I told you last week, uh, Abakuk is the only prophet who never prophesied, but became a prophet. And you know, Jonah was another prophet who did not uh, prophesy, but went and preached uh, the word to the people of Nineveh. Now, as you're going to read this book, I'm just giving you a quick introduction today so that we can, uh, uh, we can go into the book of Joel and understand why God used uh, the prophet Joel to prophesy to the people of Judah. How many of you have read at least once the book of Joel? Superb. Okay. The rest of you have not read. Try to read it this week. It will help you to be in line with our message. So I want you to turn your Bibles to Joel chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. Go ahead and read. And if they put it on the screen, you also can read together. Hope all of you have brought not your mobile Bibles, but your Bible Society Bibles. Okay, amen. Praise God. Go ahead and read. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room. 
and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let, Let them the say, people who ministers who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Today my message is return to the Lord. Return to the Lord. Return to your prayer life. Return to your Bible reading. Return to your fasting. Return to your brokenness in God's presence. That's going to be my message. Whatever you do, how popular you become. If you do not return to the Lord, your life will never be successful. You will only run your life with your emotions and not with God's anointing. Go ahead and read the rest of the verses. Let them say, spare your people, yes. Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was jealous for his land and took pity on his people. The Lord replied to them, I am sending you grain, new wine and olive oil enough to satisfy you fully never again will i make you an object of scorn to the nations i will drive the northern horde far from you pushing it into a parched and barren land its eastern ranks will drown in the dead sea and its western ranks in the mediterranean sea and its stench will go up its smell will rise surely he has done great things the book of joel the word joel means jehovah is god everybody say one time jehovah is god now if you are planning the coming week to name your son and you are looking for a name i will encourage you to name your child as joel jehovah is god or the second meaning of the word Joel is the Lord is God. The book of Joel was written to the people of Judah. It deals with their past and it deals with their future. All of us have a past life and all of us God has planned a future life for us. How many of you believe that today? You had a past life. Your past life should not decide your future life. Because in the past, you would have failed. In the past, you would have gone away from God. But God says, I am not going to look at your past. But I am going to look at your future. I will forgive you from your past sins and I will open up doors for you for your future is there somebody to clap and praise my Jesus today hallelujah, hallelujah. I like a clapping church I like a praising church I like a tongue speaking church I like a Holy Ghost church somebody give the Lord a clap offering and praise him there are two things in the book of Joel. Number one, it looks back to the judgment of God on them for their sins. If you want to take a picture, you can take it. And you know, the book of Joel deals with their past and deals with their future. Number one, it looks back to the judgment of God on them. For their sins and secondly the book of Joel it looks forward for, for a glorious day when they will enjoy the great blessings of the Lord so the past sins but the future keep it keep it on the screen please in the future the people of Judah are going to enjoy the blessings of God the theme of the book of Joel is very clear. You know what is the theme? Anybody can say the theme of the book of Joel except my brother-in-law, Dr. Balaam. Anybody else can say it's called 
the day, the day of the Lord. Everybody say the day of the Lord. Say it one more time. The day of the Lord. Your past life should not decide your future. Because whatever you have done in the past, God says, I will forgive my people and I will restore them back. People of Judah, you have gone through the worst in your life because of your choice. But I am not going to punish you. But the moment you repent and you come back to me, your life will be a blessed life. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not going to live in the past. I'm going to look for my future. I have failed. I have gone against God. I have never fasted. I have never prayed. I have never read the Bible. I have never seeked after God. But remember, it's all over. Now, a new chapter in your life. He was preaching a message of repentance. Calling the people of Judah to repent before the judgment of God. So the message of Joel was repent before the day of the Lord comes. If you are living in sin, don't expect God to bless you. God loves the sinners, but he doesn't like the sins. Don't say, I am living a sinful life. God will bless me. No, 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 no. That's why the Bible says the priest must go to the altar and they must cry before God at the altar. When you stand at the altar and you cry before God, God will wipe away all your sins and he will bring back your blessings. It is better to be a beggar and have the anointing than to be a billionaire and lose the anointing. You may say, what's gone wrong to you? Wrong with you, pastor. It's better to be a beggar who can come to the house of God, bring the Bible, pray, fast, seek God, than be a multi-billionaire driving a BMW or the latest car. I want to tell you today, God is not looking at the blessings. God is looking at you. We go after the blessings, but God is going after you. Your blessings doesn't make anything to him. You may be a CEO or a CEO, whatever. Oh, God is not bothered, but God is interested in you. My friend, this is not the end of my message. I'm just building up to an introduction. There is also a prophetic note here because Joel is looking into the future that means uh, the day when he says the day of the lord have you written down the day of the lord what joel means uh, he's saying uh, the children of israel you better repent and come back to god before the day of the lord the judgment but on the other hand joel is talking about the coming of the lord jesus christ again there's going to be a day when the trumpet will sound and the lord jesus will come down from heaven and all those who are dead will rise up and all those who are alive will be caught up in the air to live with Jesus. Give the Lord a blessed clap offering and praise him. The people in the world will not understand the Christians because ours is more than a religion. It's a relationship. I was listening to a man and you know he says we have religion and I said to him I have a relationship which is better a religion or a relationship 
I better have even if I don't give a 10,000 5,000 rupees worth sorry to my wife to my wife and have my relationship as a religion you know if I give a, a 500 rupees worth sorry and still have a relationship that matters the most than a cost of the sorry or the product you gave God is not interested in your religion God is interested in your relationship relationship brings you for prayer relationship brings you for fasting relationship makes you to read the Bible I can always say why should I worry whether you read the Bible or not who cares but I'll never say that because I'm your father I want to build you up till I have breath I want to take you to Jesus so that one day you will say this man preached the word and he touched the nation of India for Jesus Christ my dear friends come back to God that's what Joel the book of Joel is all about the nation of Israel is in trouble Turn to your neighbor and say, but David Paul, I want to tell you, turn to your neighbor and say, whenever you leave God, you are in trouble. If you agree with me, say an amen. Am I right? Whenever you leave God, you are in trouble. Whenever you miss out your prayer, you are in trouble. Whenever you break your relationship with God, you are in trouble. You may say in 1965, I received Jesus and took water baptism according to Acts 2, 4. And if I ask you, and, and you will say, and no more. No, 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 no. And I have touched the nation for Jesus. Don't listen to the people. Listen to the anointing. Don't listen to the people. Listen to the voice of the master. Joel is saying, People of Judah are in trouble. The simple reason they are in trouble is because they have disobeyed God. Now you understand the book of Joel. We only like some scriptures from here and there. The Lord will bless you from today. Wow, that's my scripture. But you need to read the context. Today everybody sends a scripture to other person. And that guy is sitting in the bar drinking. He gets a scripture. The Lord will bless you from today. And he will say, come on, let's drink more. Because God is going to bless us. Come to the context. Come to the context of the scripture. And understand what the heart of the father i want to tell you today you are in the church and god knows you you are in the church you don't need to go to god and say hey god i am mr so and so living in hrbr layout and my third class and fourth lane and my house number is 236 no you don't need to tell the moment you say jesus he knows everything about you come on somebody receive this word the prophet is saying once uh, when you repent uh, between the porches uh, there is a part when you are in trouble don't go to people go to the house of God and stay at the presence of God stay there this is what Joel is saying my church Joel is speaking to the people of Judah people of Judah you forgot the days when God was with you and today you are going away from God your blessings will never your blessings should never 
take you away from God. You speak to God and say, last week I prayed to God and I said, God, even if you take my 40,000 people, the church in Kanur, even if you take the church in Indranagar, take my position as a chairman, take my position as a district chairman. I don't care, but don't take the Holy Spirit uh, from me uh, because that's uh, the only thing uh, that will keep me going for your kingdom. So what happened to the people of Judah? Thomas, could you read? Israel was in trouble. How many of you are going through troubles after troubles? Constantly troubles. Constantly you're struggling to come out of your debts and financial bondages. But you're running to people. Don't run to people. Discipline yourself and stay with God. You will be shocked to know about the people of Judah. Go ahead and read. Go ahead and they, read. They are under constant attacks by their enemies. No, 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 no. That's not the scripture. That's the point. Joel chapter 3 verse 2. Go ahead and read. I will gather all nations mm. and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Mm. There I will enter into judgment against them concerning my inheritance. Mm. My people Israel, for they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. The children of Israel are under constant attack. One battle is over, the next battle. Number two, Joel chapter one, verse seven. They have experienced a terrible drought and a massive invasion of the locust. So Joel is saying, the enemies have come and invaded you. And number two, he says, the locusts have come to attack you. The children of Israel are in trouble. Are you in trouble this morning? This message is for you. We are going to get back to God. When we return back to God, Pastor, I have gone too far. I have stopped coming to prayer. I have stopped coming to reading the Bible. I have stopped, you know, attending church. I have stopped everything. And I have gone and gone and gone and gone. And now I can't go further. I will fall down and die. But God is saying, My child, return back to me. When you return, I will rebuild you. If this message is for you, I want you to shout a hallelujah and praise Him. Give Him the best clap offering and praise Him. Joel chapter 1 verse 7. It has laid waste my wines mm. and ruined my fig trees. Yes. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away. Yes. Leaving their branches white. Mourn like a mourn virgin. Like, mourn like a virgin in sackcloth, grieving for the betrothed of her youth. Verse number 12. The wine is dried up. The wine the, is dried up. And the fig tree is withered. The fig tree is withered. The pomegranate, the palm and the apple tree all the trees of the field are dried up. Surely the people's joy is withered away. This is what Joel is saying to the people of Judah. The wine is gone. The vineyard, the fields, everything is dried up. Judah, listen to me. The day of the Lord is coming now. FGAG Kanuru and FGAG people watching me from all over through the YouTube channel. I welcome you in Jesus name. And I say to you, let's go back to God. Let's go back to the presence of God. Let us return back to God. If you have been hurt by people, Forget it. If you are hurt by people, 
don't sit and worry about it because all of us we get hurt by people but our problem is not getting hurt and holding it our decision should be let it go and i'm going to go to god <laughs> Am I right? Let it go. Too many will hurt you. When you rise up in leadership, many will hurt you. Many will come and tell you things you don't like it. But don't keep it in your heart. Let it go. Because something will hold you and break you and keep you away from God. Then your fields will become dried. There won't be wine. There won't be grapes. There will be nothing in your field. I don't want to allow the devil to dry up my field. I want to return back to God and I want to live for the glory of Jesus. Why don't you praise him right now? During the days of Joel, the people of God had broken their covenant with God. They became unfaithful to God. But on the other hand, this is what I want you to understand. On the other hand, they had broken the covenant and they became unfaithful to God. But on the other hand, they were still enjoying the blessings of God. Am I right? You know what? Because they had the material gifts they had the grain they had the wine they had the oil they had the figs they had the pomegranates they had the grapes they had the apples and herds of cattle and sheep in the autumn and spring rains came at their usual time providing for God's people and they lived in security and prosperity, but still they did not worship God. God in his grace will give you everything. But you need to come back to God. You understood now? The children of Judah had everything, but they had a broken covenant with God. They liked the blessings of God, but they didn't like their covenant with God. Pastor, I like FGAG. I like praise. I like everything. But don't pull me too much. Uh, no, too much. I don't want to come. Because I have a job. My friend, you learned a lesson during COVID. Who had a job? Everybody had a job. And when that our Prime Minister Modi ji came and said, ring the bell and beat that uh, cup and saucer. And then everybody chased away the COVID virus. Everybody did it so faithfully. But more people died. I want to tell you today, my friends, uh, the trust in people will never help you. A trust in a government will never help you. Trust in your bank balance uh, will never help you. Your providence uh, is not uh, from people. Your blessings are from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Somebody praise him. You know, friends, in the midst of the blessings of God, the people of Judah were worshiping idols and they heard to God. God is telling, I am blessing you now, but still you are worshipping, you have left me and you are worshipping those gods. And God is saying, Judah, you need to come back to me. You have the wine, you have the grapes, you have the pomegranates, you have the vineyard, you have the water. You have the autumn rain, the weather condition, everything is for you. But why have you gone away from God? You have broken your covenant with God. That's why Joel is prophesying and he's saying, come back to the altar. I went to see a normal chairman. 
of a district in Kerala. He looked at me and he cried and he said, you taught me humbleness. You remember that? Yes, he said to me, if I were in your position as a chairman of the country, I would never dare to come to meet you if you are a local district chairman. I said, this is not politics. This is God's kingdom. You have the wine, you have the pomegranates, you have the rain. But Judah, you have gone away from God. You have forgotten the way God brought you out of Egypt. You had nothing. You had absolutely nothing. You come here, brother, with the brown specks there behind you, back of you, you, you. Come here. I give you this quote. You came without a coat. When you were in Egypt, you had nothing. You had to make bricks without anything. Pharaoh tormented and suffocated you. But God says, I brought you out and I clothed you with my righteousness. Put that coat around you. Put your hand inside. Set up right now. Today you look like an executive. You look like a, look at yourself on that camera. Right? You look like a great man. And this is what God says to the people of Judah. When you were in, you know, in Egypt, you had nothing. But I brought you out. I gave you the wine. I gave you the fruit. I gave you the I gave you the rain. I gave you everything. I gave you prosperity and protection. But people of Judah, you are enjoying my blessings. But you have broken my covenant. Broken the covenant with me. And that's why Joel says, you can keep that for you. I can't give you the band now. I say to you in Jesus name God is speaking to the people you came out of the Egyptian bondage and God planted them in a beautiful land of Canaan instead of being loyal to the God who revealed himself they worshipped other gods they rejected their only God but they were still receiving the benefits the benefits are not the standards for your relationship with God. I hope you will write it down and give it to me. The benefits are not the standards for your relationship with God. Pastor, after coming to church, I got a car. After coming to church, I got a house. After coming to church, I got a promotion. My friend, all that is secondary. Only I want to ask you, after coming to church, are you walking with Jesus? After coming to church, are you lifting up Jesus? After coming to church, do you still go and fight with people? God is not interested in your car. God doesn't know which is BMW and which is Benz. Only you know. You boast about your positions. God doesn't bother. God will ask. One angel will say, And God will say, I want to tell you today, God is not interested about who you are and what you are today. God is interested about your relationship with Him. I 
don't care whether you wear a suit. I don't care whether you drive the best car. I don't care what you are, where you live in eight bedroom house. My point to you today is do you have a relationship and a covenant with God? My time is up. Pastor Grace, I'm going to finish it. Everybody stand up. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Even now, declares the Lord, return One to minute, me. one minute, Thomas. You're going to read three scriptures, okay? Everybody, there were several areas in the Bible which talks about the unfaithfulness of the people of Judah. You got it? There are several references in the Bible which talks about the unfaithfulness of the people of Judah. God is not interested in how you pray and how you shout, how you scream. God is interested in your relationship with him. There is a hierarchy. Am I right, Pastor David Balasing? God has given a hierarchy. There is God. There is a pastor. There are elders. There are leaders. There are people. You work together. And God will raise you up. In Timothy, Paul says to Timothy, don't give to new people who have come to the Lord because they will become conceited and they will fall. If you were baptized yesterday, I don't want to put you as an altar worker today because tomorrow you will start a church but your dress is still not dried up. And I say to you, dear friends, there are three areas they were unfaithful. Number one, Joel 2.12. Even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. That's it. That's it. Everybody lift your right hand and say, return to me. Yeah. Return to me. Why did God say, return to me? Why? The reason God said, return to me, it's because they went away from him. You will never look at a person and say, return to me when they are sitting next to you. Am I right? Because they went away from God. God says, return. Turn to your neighbor and say, return. Come on, come on, turn to your neighbor, near to your neighbor. Come on, sister, escort it. tell your husband. Tell your husband, return. Husband, tell your wife, return. Return to prayer. Return to fasting. Return to Bible reading. Return to crying unto God. Return to 24 hours of prayer. Return to be broken in the presence of God. If you don't pray, if you don't fast, if you don't you know, spend time with God, you are useless. You are living in a religion and not a relationship. Such people only say, when I close my eyes, I see something black. One lady came and told me, when I close my eyes, pastor, in Canada, I said, if you close your eyes, Buddha only will come. Pastor, when I close my eyes, everything is dark. I said, then open your eyes and sleep in the night. One lady came and told me, 4.30 in the morning, something black goes in front of my bed. Can you please pray? I told her, that's your husband going to bathroom. We spiritualize it. Get ready, church. Return. Return. Are you ready to return? I will have 100 people.
with fasting and prayer and who will pray with me than having 10,000 people in my church without people who pray and fast and who don't even see God. I'm not looking for a crowd. You know the crowd I can get rid of. But I'm talking to you. It's not about the crowd. It's about the returning back to God. Number two, Joel chapter one and verse five. Wake up, you drunkards. Wake up, you drunkards. And we- you know why? You know why God said, wake up, you drunkards. Can somebody tell me? It's because God supplied everything for them. That's why God said, wake up, you drunkards. God supplied everything for them. Surplus. And now, they are enjoying the supply. And they have forgotten the supplier. Who is more important, the healing or the healer? Come on, say it loudly. The supplier or the supplier? Supplier. The gift or the giver? Giver. Some of you are saying, gift. It's better to be with the giver. Better to be with the giver. So that even if no one gives you, you have the giver with you. He will give it to you in surplus. And finally, in Joel chapter 2, verse 27. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God. And that there there is is no other. Now imagine, dear friends, why did God say this? Can somebody say? God said this, you know why? Because the children of Israel, they went after other gods. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't go after other gods. When you get married, look for a believer. If anybody here, you are not a believer, your wife is a believer, and you are not a believer, and the husband is a believer, wife is not a believer, it's okay. Now, but I'm talking about youngsters who are planning to get married. Don't look for Aishwari Rai and Shishmita Sen. Don't look for Shah Rukh Khan style. Don't look for a Tendulkar and for a Dhoni. Look for a born again, spirit filled, baptized. That girl, that boy, a pastor. He looks like a monkey. It's better to have a monkey with Jesus. That girl looks like a devil. It's better to have a devil with the anointing. Don't go after beauty. Beauty will fade. But the anointing will never fade. In Tamil, there is a comedian. He got his sister married to another guy who was fair. On the wedding day, she looked so fair. And the man, boy, who was so fair was so happy because the girl looked so fair. But on the first night, after the first night when she was having bath, all that paint was going out. And by the time she came out, she looked uh, jet black. uh, And he said, how come you looked uh, so beautiful? And she said, that's why we have beauty parlor. I want to tell you, beauty parlor can change uh, your face. Uh, They can do facials, uh, cut your hair, and make you to look so beautiful. But there is something that is inside of you. And that is called uh, the anointing uh, and the power of God's spirit. Uh, Is there somebody to give the Lord uh, a clap offering and praise Him? Uh, Beauty is not in the color. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If God has created, He will give you the best. But you know, I have a revelation for you. When God created Eve for Adam, it was a little painful for Adam. Because he had to take a rib. Cutting my nail itself is so painful. 
think about taking a rib. I was thinking why he made it painful. This is my revelation. Don't follow. Because God said, I am giving you one with pain. <laughs> I never, I'm just my revelation. Lifelong pain. Pastor Bala is saying, thank God what you said because he's married to my sister. <laughs> And I say to you today, yeah, my dear friends, uh, I don't care for the pain, I don't care for the color, but I want the anointing uh, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, somebody give the Lord uh, for the next 30 seconds. Uh, praise Him as ever before. Uh, oh. I surrender all to you. Everybody, I surrender all to you. Take me, Lord, and you see. Take me, Lord, and you the music everybody I surrender louder all to you take me Lord and use me one more time I wrote this song and I put one stanza all my life I've trusted you that's my testimony 47 years I have only trusted God and that's why God is bringing people to the house of God As a pastor, I'm telling you, no offense without any offense to anybody. Believers are very funny. Sometimes they will believe and leave. Believers. Suddenly they will leave. Suddenly they will believe. But our trust must be in God. I'm telling you, it's easy to build a house. It's easy to have two children and one wife and one husband. 40,000 people. I need God. People hurt us, but I don't care. That day somebody interviewed me and asked me, when you are hurt, what do you do? I said, I keep silence and uh, I keep silent and I bite my lips, I said, and I trust God. Because there are certain times uh, you don't want to talk about it. You know that song, I don't want to talk about it. And yeah, but I want to tell you today, we don't want to talk about it, but we want to trust in God. All my life I've trusted you All my life I've trusted you Take me Lord and you Speed as one more time Lord Take me Lord
say today, yes, pastor, I want to return back to God. Just come to the altar. We are going to pray for you. No force. You want to come back to God. I want to get back to my prayer life. I want to get back to my Bible reading. I want to get back to Jesus. I've got the car. I've got the house. I've got the blessings. And now I'm like, uh, I've got everything with me. But I know somewhere on the line, I'm lacking my God. I need God. I know, Pastor. Today, I came to church with 1,000 rupees income. But today, I earn oh, more than 10 lakhs to 12 lakhs a month. My salary crosses over 1.5 crores in a year. But, Pastor, somewhere on the line, I have missed out God come forward you're not coming out of guilt you're coming out of repentance to say to God I want to return back oh my people of Judah you have become drunkards because you are enjoying my blessings but you are not coming after me you are going after other gods and the Lord is saying come back to me people of Israel you will know that there is only one God only one God for the people of Israel only one God for the people of Judah only one God for for Christians in India, we have only one God, one God, one God. And his name is Jesus, uh, the son of the living God who rose from the grave uh, on the third day and put the enemy to shame, uh, slapped him on his face and kicked him on his back uh, and pulled out the keys uh, from the gates of hell. Uh, and he is risen uh, and he's alive, uh, interceding on your behalf and my behalf, uh, waiting for the day, uh, for the day of the Lord, uh, that he will come uh, when the trumpet sounds uh, and when the angels come together oh my god that day will be a day of victory for all the christians somebody clap and praise him right now in jesus name give him the best 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 Give him the best. Give him the best. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the Lord who brought me out of Egypt. I'm coming back to my master. Jesus. When a Roman emperor comes after a victory against a nation, he comes with all people shouting and screaming, Wow, he's our emperor. The whole nation will be screaming. But there will be one person right next to the emperor telling into his ears emperor this will fade away this will fade away be careful the same people who are screaming to lift you up will chase you from this country so don't go after your fame go after the deliverer I speak in Jesus name Pastors, care pastors, I want you to pray for everybody. I want to tell you about this anointed oil. This oil we have here, it's never given to you. Can I have that oil? This oil that is here, this oil. This oil. We never give without prayer. Our tears touch us this oil. 2000, while I was in Indranagar at the altar alone, crying before God for a fresh anointing, the Holy Spirit asked me, where is the anointed oil in your church? For 24 years, I'm giving free oil to people. And I have never sold this even once. I will never sell the anointing. This is given free to you. That lady with the fungus, they were going to amputate her legs. 
she took this oil her sister one sister from california called and said i went to the doctor and the doctor said you can never conceive can you send me some oil we sent some oil she applied it on her stomach she prayed and the next 10 month she delivered a baby there is power in the anointing power i speak in jesus name pastors put this oil and pray for the people spread out spread out put this oil and pray for them you may be in the worst condition today but i'm telling you return back to god no other answer for you just return back to god give up everything and just come back to god things will fall in line put the oil put the oil every pastor put the oil put the oil take the oil just put it on people or ramashtele badanaba now may the grace of our lord the love of the father and the fellowship of his holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen come on everybody put the oil take the oil somebody hold this oil and put it on everybody chenga rama shandra boda rama oh rima lama kama prata prata i want you to put the oil on everybody please listen to what i'm saying just put the oil on everybody and anoint